Hey, go! Hey, bring that up! Bring it in tight, bring it in tight! Hey, man, check me out. At the end of the day, bro, we did not get shit done last week. I take that shit to heart. I fucking hate losing. So we got to correct that shit today from the start. Dominate on three. One, two, three. Dominate. Feed the two teams exchanging punts on their first possessions of this Sunday late morning tilt in Birmingham. And a good punt from Duffy. It'll be downed inside the five-yard line by Malcolm Elmore at the four. And the breakers. Third and eight. Sloter gonna run. Sloter digging, and he's got the first down. A lot of room and a little more explosiveness from Sloter on that run. Well, you're gonna see some man coverage out there. When Slo Sloter sees the man coverage, he immediately thinks to himself, "Okay, there's no one left for me." And now he can get out of there. And the little pump he saw the the one defender Pittsburgh had that was kind of free, kind of a free safety, and he knows that if he pumps the ball that he can get a little bit more room, get the chains, and then get down. So an excellent play there. Hey, set. Sloter with time over the middle, and it's caught by Dixon for the first down. He juggled it a bit, but able to secure it and get the first. Well, going forward on fourth down, you're going to put the decision in your quarterback's hands, and he makes a good one here. You see all the defenders up there tight. They play zone again, and as those players sit down in the zones, that is a terrific read by Johnny Dixon in there, and you're going to let those defensive linemen go, and you can see the quick decision there, getting the ball out to his running back, and that is a huge shot taken from Slaughter, as we see from the ref cam right there. Bang. And then driven through for the running back. Big snap and a touchdown for Anthony Jones. Breakers, a 94-yard march to grab the early lead. This offensive line is doing a great job in the run game. And again, untouched. Watch this push that they're able to get. This offensive line is doing a heck of a job. They get the push. They get up to the second level. And it's an easy touchdown as Jones finds himself into the end zone. First touchdown for Anthony Jones this year. First quarter stats that we can see for this Pittsburgh Breakers game here. Third down. Third and nine. Lee under pressure in some trouble. Down he goes. Nobody open downfield. The pocket collapsed, and he ends up in the arms of Vontae Diggs, who has his first sack. Well, he was looking over to the left side and watched the coverage on the left side. This Breakers team, they run primarily a, a form of man coverage, a closed safety, but this is a nice job of covering up those wide receivers. There was nowhere to go with the football. And Pittsburgh loves to max protect, keep a lot of guys in, and force the quarterback to make throws to just, you know, two and three receivers in there on the line. And you wonder, how does Vadley come in as prepared as he was with only five days? Well, this is what Vadley was doing before he signed with the Maulers. He said, I watch football with a purpose, Joel. And he would listen as we had the play calls on TV, and he'd write them down so that he could try to learn the offenses in case he got an opportunity to play professional football again. I mean, I just, I, I love the initiative and the preparation from Bad Lee. This guy, it, everything that he does is done with purpose in his personal life and his professional life. Well, Zach Smith. Six and three record at Tulsa, averaged over 216 yards per game, 13 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, had a tryout with the Bills in 2021, but has never played in the National Football League. Second down and seven. First pass, Smith fires, it is caught. Good strike and a first down as he catches up with Taewon Taylor. Let's check in with like that. Third and ten. Sloter under pressure, down he goes. He has been under duress all day long from Ethan Westbrooks, and the longtime NFL veteran gets his sack. I'll tell you, the rush has been very good for Pittsburgh so far today, and it's really been Westbrook, guys. Yeah, we saw the balance on your dr touchdown drive, a long drive. We see you moving around and running. How's the leg holding up? Leg feels okay. It's uh, it's not 100%, but I'm just trying to move enough. It, it feels good enough. I feel like I'm kind of in that weird area where I could go one way or the other uh, if I push it too hard. So um, just trying to be smart with it, but help the team and in, in, in run football if I can. How was, the, how was it sitting on the sideline watching Kyle get his, a rep that was planned from the beginning? 
Yeah, no, it, uh, it, it's fun to see guys go out there and realize their professional dreams of playing football. That's his first reps as a professional quarterback. So uh, super happy for him, super supportive of him. Um, if he gets back in there again, I'll, I'll be ecstatic for him. Protect that leg. NFL Replay Center. Walk us through what you saw, Mr. Pereira, on that fight that broke out before we had the punt a moment ago. Well, I saw a lot, Kevin. I mean, I knew we had a lot going on, including an offensive foul for 12 men on the field when the ball was snapped. And that first shot right there, I couldn't confirm. And then I actually didn't see the punches until too late. Because if I'd have seen the last shot that we actually had, um, I would have wanted to eject them. So I should have slowed down and waited a little bit longer. And then um, I actually would have ended up ejecting both players. But one, one more point of clarification, just for my sake, if you don't Defense mind, Mike, 94. as we listen to the encroachment results calls. And the first down. So the penalties were offset as far as the personal fouls on that play that we just looked at. But then the 12 men on the field took us back to third down. Is that correct? Yeah, because you basically replay the down because a foul that occurs in the live ball, which is the 12 on the field on the offense, actually combines with the dead ball foul. Unlike the college rule where you would enforce both in the NFL live balls and dead ball fouls offset. Perfect. Thank you, Mike Pereira. Third and ten, five-man rush, lead to the sideline, it's intercepted. Picked off on the sideline, Jare Elder was in the area, but it's Ike Brown who comes up with a pick. This is great defense. He knows where the chains are. He knows where Bailey Gaither is trying to get, and he jumps the route. That ball was thrown late and behind Bailey Gaither, and Ike Brown took advantage. A great job diving, and it looks like, yes, he secures that. Ball does not hit the ground, and he's able to pick it off. See him just sit? He knows where the chains are. He knows where that yellow line's at, right? And he knows that that's where Bailey Gaither is trying to get to, and he just sits there, squats on the route, and then he's able to dive for that ball as it was underthrown and behind him. Badly has got to throw that ball on time. And here comes the field goal unit on. So Taylor Bertolet with five seconds left until halftime will come on to try to extend it to a 10-0 lead. And the kick by Bertolette is good, and it is 10-0 New Orleans. You had some success in the in the long touchdown drive on the ground. Is there a plan to try to go back to the run and find some more lanes for the running game to make it easier for your quarterback? Yeah, we 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 were running the ball very consistently. We got to go back to that and just keep doing it. You know, we just got we got behind the chains a few times, which made it hard to do. So we got to stay ahead of the chains and be more efficient on first down. Your defense had some blunders there, almost at the end, but they get a pick and they hold a shutout. How do you what do you want to say about the defense? I got to keep playing just like they're playing, and we'll be fine. All right, thanks. Coach. Ability to slow down the run game and we certainly wish our best for Connor Christian as he will be tended to off the field here in Birmingham we did see some so Ramiz Ahmed will try this one from 37 the snap gets down and the kick is good and the Maulers are on the board. Three Delta. 31. 31. 23 Delta. Linda. Hey, Monday. Sunday, Sunday, set. The tenth run of the drive. And it's Ellis into the end zone for a New Orleans touchdown. Ellis does a great job of getting away from the free defender. Watch Tornado, and here's the free defender, and as he walks up, what you're going to get here is just a wiggle, and then he's out the gate. Great job of making him miss in the backfield, and then he's got a nose for the end zone, and he's able to get in there. You always have to understand, as a running back, you get inside the 10-yard line, at times you've got to be your own blocker. There's always going to be an unblocked defensive player, and Ellis does a perfect job. Why <laughs> pocket with time big hit leveled after the catch is made short of the first down Isaac 
Yeah, I'm down on the field in the thick of it. The two guys, the two touchdown drives, they lean heavily on you guys. Heard Coach Fedora come over here and say, hey, we're going to lean on you to go win this game. How does that feel? Man, it feels good. I mean, we, we talked about it in practice. Um, me and Ant, we prepared for this moment, and uh, we just showing what we prepared for all week. And um, it's just, you know, showing on game day. And, um, I mean, we just we, we feed off of each other. You know, he got it started. You know, I'm starting to get in my rhythm, so we just feed off each other. Uh, we just we, we just want to see the team win. You know, whatever we can do to do that, um, that's what we're doing. So one touchdown apiece, thunder and lightning. How, how do you feel coming in this game where you've been throwing the ball quite a bit, and now they're leaning on the running game? Uh, I mean, it's great, you know, just executing where we went through in practice all week and, you know, just seeing the big guys get on their guys, and we hitting it like we know how to hit it, hitting how we getting coached. So it's great coming out here and, you know, just executing the play that coach designed for us. Yeah, well, Joe, uh, Coach Fedor came over here. He said, in, in Viper protection, we all three need to be ready. So, um, <laughs> you, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I love it. They're definitely getting it done. They're Third and goal. Lee to the air. Intercepted. Picked off by Ike Brown. And Brown going downtown. Ike Brown all the way for the touchdown. That is frustrated because his wide receiver, Bailey Gates, number four. And Vad Lee is kind of bailed out. You see he's got to throw it before he wants to because of the pressure. And that ball is tipped up in excellent concentration. Third down and ten. Lee in the pocket with time. Looking for the end zone. It is caught. Bailey Gaither. A little redemption. The touchdown. Third and goal. Lee with time. Now on the run. He'll tuck it. Lee, touchdown! Bad Lee trying to be the hero for the second straight week. Brings the Maulers even closer here in the fourth. Bad Lee, just effort, determination, gets himself across the goal line, running over Jared Fernandez from North Carolina State. Man. Bad Lee just refuses to give in. Nothing was working for Pittsburgh. Really for the entirety of the day, guys. Their offense looked completely inept for a large portion of this game. And he has just brought them to life through sheer leadership and determination. He's got guys not running the right route. He just gets on them. He tells them which route to run and comes back. He just keeps playing. This guy, I tell you, there's something special about Vad Lee. And we're seeing it come to fruition in this second half. 11 of 21 for 144 yards and two total touchdowns. And that's after the pick six. I mean, they looked buried, guys, after the pick six. It's 23 to three. And he comes out. Just kept playing, kept swinging, and he's played fantastic. For Taylor Bertolet. Good snap, good hold. The kick is good, and the Breakers take the 10-point lead with 35 seconds to play. Yeah, you're absolutely right. He is taking over, and his coach, Coach Mike Riley, said that he is extremely diligent. What's allowing you to be so diligent and have so much success here in the middle of the season? I think just having a coaching staff trusting me and me trusting the coaching staff and executing whatever this coach is trying to do on the offensive. What's the thing that you're looking forward to do most in this game to make sure you come out with a victory and be as efficient as you was last week? Well, just manage the game, uh, put points on the board, and uh, keep the drives moving. All right, good luck. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, to go. He enjoys the territory. All kinds of time for Thorson. Wide open, down the sideline, touchdown. Right out of the gate. Tio Redding with the score. Three plays, a 48-yard touchdown, and Houston's on the board. Well, the corner on that side, number 26, Dewan Neal, just falls down. Watch, he's just going to kind of stumble right there. They get locked up. He goes to the ground, and it just becomes an easy touchdown for Redding. Just a straight go route. They were trying to get that wheel, and you could tell that Thorson wanted to get the ball down the field, and he pumped a couple of times, and then he saw Neal hit the turf. 
and he had Redding for an easy touchdown. That is a beautiful way to start this ball game for this Houston club who lost heartbreaking game last week and the week before. Nick Fogel makes it a 7-0 lead. Stops when it matters late in the game. Johnson keeps it. Nice pass. And that's a touchdown. Cavante Turpin. Turpin. The fullback, or excuse me, the tight end right there. That was Woody Brandom. Well, that, that's him. And it's an easy sack for Payne. And so the offense stalled a bit. Once the Andre Johnson got up. Now, those of you that want to be a cameraman, you sure about that? Check out this. Oh. Right squeeze, 61, Rita. Duff, we hope you're okay, man. Our guy Duff, this was his look. He's like, oh, I got the shot. I got the shot for our director, Mitch. And he's like, I said, oh, and there he is, Duff. <laughs> Duff game all season long. Forcing, going deep, down the right sideline, Zuber. Was it caught for an interception? Yes, it was. Devontae Bosby picks it off. It was one of the wide receivers with uh, Carson Wentz there. Perez, pump fake, going deep. He's got Turpin. Oh, dropped it in the basket. What a catch. What a throw. A flag for a late hit as well, but that'll be a touchdown. This guy's dangerous. It's a group here. And then they pump. Pump. Then he Ruffing takes the off. Passer. And by the Defense, way, that number is a huge that mismatch. That 15-yard penalty will be enforced on That's the kickoff. The goodness. result of the play is a touchdown. The outside linebacker trying to run down the field with Cavante Turpin. It's an excellent throw. And by the way, good on Gooden for even being within a step of Cavante Turpin. There's a late hit from the ref cam, but a terrific throw after that pump. By Cavante Turpin. You know, Turpin had no touchdown catches coming into today. He's got two in the first 20 minutes, and he's standing by right now with Devin Gardner. So uh, does it matter who's the quarterback when they got Turpin out there? Uh, no, it doesn't matter. I just try to come out here and make plays for the team. And whatever quarterback you're exactly trying to make, get better. So what I see is it a different kind of poise, right? You get to skip to Malou on your first touchdown. You put this guy on the ground almost. And then they disrespectfully put a number 99 covering you. <laughs> and you have poise, slow down, put a hump in your back, and allow the ball to come over your shoulder. How are you able to just play at a different speed? It's just like, man, Coach, Coach JR, man, the receiver coach, he just told me, like, just play at my speed. So I try, try to play at my speed, try to make it make it be easy for the quarterbacks. And so that's what I try to do. I think your speed is fast enough. Yeah, yeah, it's just, I just try to do what I, what I came out here to do, man, have fun with the teammates. All right, good luck, rest of the game. I want to give a shout out to my family, man. Shout out to the Turpins out there watching. Man, right there. All right, shout out to the Turpins. I think Back everybody's watching right now. The way he's playing, he's getting the world's attention. He's got 103 yeah. players in all the USFL, but he's also one of the smallest at five foot seven. Here's Perez. Nowhere to go as he shut down in the backfield. Hey, eventually give the credit on the sack to Dominique Davis. Well, there was a herd of gamblers back there with him. Green 80 to go. Thorson. Locking it up. Thompson caught. Touchdown. There is a flag, however. Let's see if this one stands. And I think Thompson just realized it's coming back. There is no foul on the play. The result of the play is a touchdown. I guess it's ball. Uh, Luis Perez hit as that ball comes out of his hand. And this has been recovered by Houston. Lolani with the recovery. Daquan Brown was the guy who hit Perez and knocked it out. Yeah, and, and also on the other side, it was both defensive ends, Kurt. Watch Odom also. Chris Odom. Number 93, I think, gets in there and gets a hand. That's his hand. Odom gets the hand on Perez as Brown is hitting him from the opposite side. And that ball wound up on the ground and recovered. There's Odom, and Odom's done such a good job this year getting to the quarterback. Ten quarterback hurries on the season. Houston leads the league 
in takeaways with 12. Where do you go? Oh, there oh, we go. So they've got they more got than more chains out. Oh, they sit them next to each other. That's what I'm talking about. Now, Devin, everything is right in the world. Get up my level, big dog status. Teamwork. That's what the gamblers' defense did to get the turnover and give their team an opportunity to take the lead. Thorson out of the backfield. Thompson first down and more. His second touchdown reception in less than a minute. And the Gamblers are dancing with the lead. This is just a normal check down, right? He's going to come out, and then he's just going to come out of the backfield. But I want you to watch Hines. Watch Hines leave in protection number four. See how he turns his head the other way? And when he turns his head towards the middle of the field, that way, Thompson, when he breaks out towards the sideline, he creates more space. So Thornton just checks the ball down to Thompson. But because Hines dropped back incorrectly with his left shoulder dipping towards the middle of the field, Thompson's got more space to run, and he ends up scoring a touchdown. Ball come, go up and over goes Turpin, and he gets the first down. Is the ability to win off the line of scrimmage, and Turpin was able to do that. And then the hurdle. How about the athleticism of Cavante Turpin? Right at the sticks, he goes up and over. Jamar Summers was on to try this one from 23 yards out. It's blocked. Houston trying to pick it up and go the other way. Well, they scoop it. Donald Payne with blockers in front of him. Ball's out again. And it'll wind up being a blocked field goal. A little excitement there in the end. And it keeps New Jersey from scoring. By the defense. Returned and recovered by... New Jersey. It'll be first down, New Jersey at the spot of recovery. Because it changed possession. Houston got the ball. Should that happen on a punt? On a kick? Well, this is, this is a field goal, right? So yeah. it's not an extra point. So the possession is reliant on the kick. Once this is blocked, that's a live ball. So whoever picks it up gains possession. Once that ball is fumbled, possession is lost. Then whoever picks up that ball gains possession. Therefore, if this becomes a real fumble and or if he was down prior, we'll see. But whoever recovered that at the end, looks like it's the Generals. They've got first down blocked. And right now it's second and goal from the three. Trey Williams ends that drop. Perez hit, balls out, and is scooped up once again by Houston. Tomasi Lalele, the big man, rumbles all the way to the end zone. And that'll get him another chain. Same two guys are going to be wearing the chain on the bench, because guess who was in the backfield? One of the best defensive players in the USFL, Chris Odom. He gets in there again, and watch this rush. He just straight beats the tackle, number 71, Calvin Ashley, and then he gets to Perez and knocks that ball out. Doesn't go for the sack. He went directly to the ball, and then it's scooped up and taken the other way. This is exactly what Houston has not been able to do in this losing streak, is come up with the play, in particular on defense, to get off the field, make the crucial play, and here they get it for a score and go up by five with just under six minutes to go here in the fourth. Trying to hang on one more time. Reverse. Pass is thrown to Perez. He gets the first down. A little trickery from Mike Riley's team. And they are knocking on the door. Cameron Eccles Looper line play. Perez on the quarterback sneak. Second effort. They gave it to him. Touchdown, New Jersey. And they win the ball game on the final play.
Mike Riley all smiles as his team wins their...